Okay, we've got Outlook configured. In this session, let's actually create a message and look at not so much how to write an email. I can't possibly be spending time showing you how to do that. You know how to do that already. What we're going to look at is the options that are new in 2007 and what they do and how they work. So first thing for me to do is really is to bring up uh, a, a window that allows me to write a new message. So we know to go to the tab right at the top, the little button at the top left-hand corner, which is new. You can pull that down and say new mail message. And here's a window that we've been familiar with before. However, the ribbons appear. We didn't have a ribbon in previous versions of Office, and the ribbon's up across the top. And it works in the, in the same way that they do in the, the other Office applications in 2007. The fields in this area here haven't really changed. They're pretty self-explanatory, um, and they're the ones that we really want to go and fill in first. Now, I've got Andy in the room who's going to be playing the role of my customer so that I can send messages back and forth. Sorry, Ishmael, I, cannot, I noticed that there is no BCC. BCC, well, BCC is not only missing here. BCC was also missing in Office 2000, and, uh, Office 2000 sometimes. And if you go and choose it from the fields list, there's one more missing. It's not just BCC that's missing. What Giorgio su is suggesting is that you've got a 2 in this area here, and you've got a CC. You've got no BCC shown. In fact, I could go one step further and say there's no from. You can even change who it's going from. And you can add those fields inside. And then it'll, the, the email will extend to allow those fields. Let me zoom out. OK, so we're, I'm gonna, we're playing the role of I'm the supplier. Andy's going to be the, uh, the customer. And I'm going to be sending him emails back and forth. I'm going to be sending him several different emails as I, teach you each of the, as I show you each of the different options. And we'll start with the, the, the first one. And, and we'll work through. So let me just populate the top section here with his details. So Andy, well, it's already started to fill it in for me because Andy Kelman is already inside my address book. Alternatively, if it hadn't prompted it by now, remember from the previous versions of Office, I could have just put in something that made it unique to Andy Kelman. So Andy K. I don't think there's another Andy that's got an Andy K at the beginning. And I could have pressed which button that would have filled in the rest of it if it hadn't prompted me with this area here. Check names, yeah. This little tick box with the guy sitting behind it would then go and take the Andy K element, check it against my global address list, and then fill it in. If there was more than one, the check names would then f um, populate a list and allow me to choose. So I'll go ahead and choose Andy Kelman. And I'm going to CC my myself in that. And if I choose check names, it says that there is actually a distribution group of all trainers, or there is a person called trainer. And that's me, so I'll choose that. Good. The subject is, I have a new product um, available. It's right. Oh, no, it's not right. It's perfect for your organization. Please contact me. Ish. OK. So pretty straightforward. Nothing new there. Nothing really changed other than the fact that you've noticed that there's a ribbon across the top. However, what's new in just the simple writing element of messages is that with the Office application like Word, if, you, you must, if you've seen the Word sessions in our, in our training series, you would have seen things like um, themes that are new in Word, Office 2007 themes, smart art that's available, the new aspects of Word art that are available, and they've all been brought across into Outlook as well. So those functions are available here. Um, and, and then you could... You could format the email accordingly, or you could even build the email based on an entire theme rather than adding the backgrounds and the colors later. So that's something you can do in here as well. So in terms of cosmetic design, um, it's, it's moved on a lot. One of the things to be careful when you're writing an email is to decide from the beginning, am I writing an email that's going to be purely made up of text, which means that it can reach the largest variety of email recipients, or am I going to be writing something that's got word art, smart art, themes and colors and banners and some pictures inside it? In which case, you're changing the type of email you're sending to formats known as rich text or, even further than that, HTML. Now, if you want them in some sort of order, the lowest and most commonly used or most accepted, most compatible format of email that you can get is simple text. Can't have pictures, can't have colors, can't have anything, just text. Everybody would read it, but it's not, very, not much fun. The next type is, type is rich text, 
which allows you to have bold italics, it allows you to have colored fonts, but doesn't really include any, can't include any dynamic data, can't include any um, uh, HTML layout, web layout, but at least it's, and it's still going to be received by a lot of people. The third type, and, and <coughs> the most cosmetically appealing, but the least of the compatible modes is HTML. Okay, so three different types of, of email formats that you can use. Do it now. I'll do it as a separate email. Good. So we're leaving it a simple text, and I'm going to send that email off to Andy. That's gone off. And hopefully, if I look at my, my folder structure, if you notice my folder structure really hasn't changed very much from the default installation of previous versions. I've still got a deleted items basket. I've got drafts, which are emails that haven't been sent yet, but I'm still working on. Inbox are emails that I've received or messages I've received. Junk email are those that have been, well, as the name suggests, have been marked as junk email. Outbox are messages waiting to go that haven't been sent yet. But notice the difference between outbox and drafts. Drafts are emails that I haven't committed to sending yet. Still working on them. Outbox is the location where emails that I have written and committed to send will sit until my Outlook or my server have actually managed to send them off. The reason why emails might reside in the outbox for a while is because I've clicked send for them to go, but my, I haven't got a connectivity to my internet service provider. Or, my, um, or I've met possibly delayed the email from being sent right now to another time. And that's a new feature in 2007. Writing a message now and delaying it so that it doesn't get sent until a week down the road. RSS feeds are new and we'll look at those. Sent items are pretty straightforward and search folders are predefined, um, predefined queries that you can, you can have set up. Okay, so hopefully if I go to my inbox, we should see that there is uh, an email from myself, trainer, I have a new product available. And if I move this to do bar along a little bit or even collapse it completely, there's my preview pane that was available in previous versions as well. Andy, did you receive an email? You did, okay. Good, and you've been able to read it. Could you just send me a quick reply so they can come back in here? It could just be a simple message that says, and be nice this time. Otherwise, you don't get a discount on the products I'm going to be selling you. Here goes Andy, typing a thesis. It's not a poem. OK, the reason why I want you to see, here we go. Instantly, the message comes in. We've got this. We've got a, 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 the, 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 the bubble that used to appear before to remind us of the fact that we've got an, an email in our inbox. That's appeared as usual. There's Andy's email, and I can read it. And there it is in the preview pane. What's interesting, though, is these two little flags that have, have, have appeared. And I'll zoom in so that you can see them, these two little options per email in my inbox. One is a flag which was, like before, uh, flag to fo follow up to do. So if I was to right-click on, on the flag, you can see that I can set to follow up. It's something that I have to do later on, depending on when I want to do it. You can customize what the, the setting should be. Um, I could even mark it as complete with the tick boxes before. Okay, so, or, or you could add a little reminder, so it'll pop up and remind you of the fact that you've got to do something. But at least it's easily accessible now versus the previous versions. The flags are available right there, right-click, and we can choose them. And we've also got this little, little squares inside, which are color categorization. So I can right-click on that and assign a color scheme to each of these. And if I assign a, a, a color, for example, Andy Kelman is going to get a red color. It's given it a red, and then for me, I've got to be able to remember that red means Andy Kelman. Okay? Alternatively, I could assign him a different color. Um, and, and pretty much assign values to them. There we go. Sorry. There's my red category here. I could effectively rename that to meaning Andy Kelman. Okay, so Andy Kelman sales. Any sales that I'm making to Andy Kelman will all be red, so I can mark them. So you've got color, color categorization, and you've got the follow-ups to do. What's interesting is that if you want to set an email, if I send an email to Andy and I want to mark it with a follow-up, you've got to remember that when you send an email, it doesn't appear in your inbox, it goes into the sent items. Now, a lot of people delete the contents of their sent items. So once again, if I send an email to Andy and say, hey, here's a new product, 
get in touch with me. I'll get in touch with you in a week's time with some brochures and marketing material to tell you a little bit about the specifications of our new product. Um, and I mark that for follow-up. He's going to receive the email with a flag that says it's gonna, it needs to be followed up. That's my customer. What on earth is he following up? It's for me to follow up. So what people should really do is market for attention, CC yourself with the email so that it appears in yours with a marked as follow-up as well. Okay? There's no point marking it for follow-up for the customer and then just sending it when it doesn't appear in your inbox. Okay? So these are a couple of new features as well. The categorization and the, and the flagging for follow-up.